So you've been hearing how awesome Firebase is, but it's time to check it out for yourself. So let's go to firebase.com and create an account. So here at firebase.com, we can easily go to the top right and we can click sign up free. And from here, we can just create an account and all you need is an email and a password, no confirmation or anything. So I'll type in my email and my super secret password and we can create an account. And just like that, you have a Firebase account created for you. And then also it comes with a default Firebase as well. So right here, it's called my first app and we can keep the name as that and we can click view Firebase and we can skip the tour because that's what I'm here for. And this right here is called the forge. This is a nice visual way to see all of your data within your Firebase. To the left, you'll see some tabs for security rules, simulator analytics, and other things. And we'll be going over these in later lessons in this course. So our Firebase that was created for us is called Brilliant Fire 2753. And we can change that to whatever we want, but we'll just keep it for the sake of this tutorial. And right here, we can see a plus sign. And if we click on it, you can see a name and a value. So this is just like any other NoSQL database that you've worked with before. So we can say that the name is message and the value will be the obligatory hello world. And you can see that the Firebase turned orange and the message turned green. And that's because orange will indicate that something has changed and the green will indicate that something is being added. And we know that from the legend on the right. So as we perform more CRUD actions, we'll see the Forge update in real time. And we've mentioned before that Firebase is a RESTful API. And to demonstrate this, at the end of our URL, we'll just say slash message. And then when we get to the message, we can see that it pulls up just the message and not the root Brilliant Fire node. And if we want to see it just as JSON, we can say message.json. And then we see hello world. And we can do the same for the root node of our Firebase as well. So you could use this from really any code base that has an HTTP client to grab the data from your Firebase. But that won't get you the real-time data alone. So let's go back to the forge. And we can delete our message because we don't really need it. And up here to the top right, you can see that we can import JSON and we can export any existing JSON. So right now I'm going to import a JSON document that has a list of messages. So I'll choose a file and my file name is data.json. So I'll import that. And you can see that we now have a list of messages. So if I open this up, we have these unique keys for each node and each one is the text and the user who wrote it. So previously we went into the messages node using a URL and still using a URL, we can actually drill down even further into that. So we'll say slash messages. And then this is the value of the first node. And we can see that we have text hello and the user is Bob. And if we append .json, we see the value as JSON as well. So now you can see that Firebase is essentially a NoSQL database with a RESTful API on top of it. But obviously one of the killer features is that WebSockets is built in. So to show how Firebase can update in real time, we'll run some curl requests in the terminal side by side with the browser. So let's write our curl request. So we'll say curl x post d and then we'll put in our JSON message and we'll have user, user will be Dan, the text will be hey there. And then we'll add our Firebase URL and we'll say slash messages dot JSON. So this will push on a child node to our messages node. So I'll go collapse this right here. So when we send this post, we'll see our messages node update in real time. And just like that, we added a new item to our messages node and we saw it update without having to refresh our forge at all. And we also could send a delete request and we could see that update in real time as well. So we'll copy the name of the node, clear out the terminal, and we'll run a curl. We'll type in the URL of our Firebase. We'll get into the messages node. We'll paste in the name of the node that we want to delete and we'll tack .json to it. So now when we hit enter, we'll see this delete in real time. And we saw the node delete in the forge. So as you can see, setting up a Firebase and then performing CRUD operations on it really takes no time at all. So the next tutorial, we'll focus on setting up a boilerplate for our application so we can start writing our own Firebase code in Angular.